bed bugs. Now, bed bugs are a thing wherever you go uh, in Europe. They're much more prevalent than they are here. They like to feed on our blood. They like the warmth of our bodies. And they like to um, feed on us during the night. And if you've ever been bitten by a bed bug, it's a very painful, itchy, scratchy little thing. But it's got to the point now where the Eurostar trains people are deep cleaning the trains. On the Paris Metro, they're deep cleaning the trains. One assumes that the airlines are deep cleaning planes coming out of Paris. One would hope so. It is a problem. It it has become something of a problem. Owen Corrie, uh, travel journalist uh, and editor of Air and Travel magazine. Owen, they are commonplace. Bed bugs are commonplace in France and Spain, but we do seem to have a problem here. Good morning. Uh, good morning, PJ. And they can go for a year without food. So uh, last year's bed bug can suddenly jump to life. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Didn't know that. <laughs> They'll be ready for the Olympics after the World Cup when they stop eating after the World Cup. But the thing is that, um, you know, it's full of headlines. It's a lot of headlines. The reality is the state of the problem is probably overstated a little bit uh, because it uh, isn't affecting bookings. It isn't affecting people traveling. There was one cancellation which sort of catapulted this into the headlines. Somebody who had an Airbnb booking for the World Cup, uh, an Irish fan, and discovered that it was cancelled. Uh, bed books, uh, summer is a good time for them. Uh, then around September, you have this huge infestation of them. And the infestation used to be worse in years gone by. Uh, so the, worldwide, it used to be but these very heavy duty insecticides that came in in the 1940s, 1950s, DDT would be the most prominent of them, mm. more or less almost wiped them out. The thing about it is insecticides are out of fashion. Uh, you're not allowed to use a lot of the heavy duty ones anymore. They're making a comeback. And the ones that are making a comeback a bit like uh, all the problems we have with bacteriology, uh, that they're a little bit more resistant, so they're harder to get rid of. In a hotel where the laundry goes out every day and the sheets are washed and changed every day or two, they're less of a problem than, like you say, in an Airbnb where the stuff might only be changed in between rentals. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it is, a, it is a matter of the, the right temperature. It is a matter of the changing of beds. It's, a change, it's all of those sort of things. But they... We are, are we at a scale a problem where the hospitals reached about 10 or 15 years ago where we're now moving to rubber um, mattress, rubber coatings and mattresses and sheets and things like that? Probably not, but it's certainly cert uh, something worth keeping an eye on. Mm. And as you say, when you're bitten by one, you know all about it. You do. Um, as somebody once said, anybody who thinks, who doesn't believe that uh, in small problems should go to bed with a mosquito. <laughs> Indeed. Get one trapped under the sheet with you. It ain't pleasant. But on it hasn't deterred anybody from travelling. You, you can't get onto a plane to, to, to France this weekend. No, nor, nor is it going to. And it's not a French problem, it's an international problem. But for France uh, is absolutely... It's oddly enough, France is well positioned for things like the World Cup and for the Olympics next year because of the sheer number of beds, 280,000 of them. That would be more than New York, you know, or Le Vegas. Uh, it certainly dwarfs the, the number that we'd have in Dublin really? of uh, uh, about 30,000. It's one of the cities with the most hotel beds in the world. Really? So okay. something like the World Cup can come and go without causing the havoc that it did, for instance, in Cardiff, as people remember trying to get a bed in Cardiff a few years ago. Now, the thing about it is, the uh, issue for is the flights, as you say. Air, uh, Ryanair has put eight extra flights on, but that's not going to solve the problem for people getting in and out because tickets are going to be the problem from now on. And the big packages... Uh, for the semi-final and final, and of course we're we're crossing our fingers and being wood as we're talking about this. Um, the big packages are about twelve hundred euro now uh, for flying in and out and getting to the match. The problem is going to be the match tickets. I was listening to people talking after the South Africa game, Owen, of having booked packages that they thought included tickets, and when they got to the stadium, there was a problem because somebody else had just bar scanned the same ticket. Okay, uh, there is there's a, a 
sort of a, a ticket agent. It's held by um, Club Travel, Abbey Travel, and Kilester Travel. Uh, that lots of people would be very familiar with traveling with the Munster rugby team. Yeah. Um, that uh, Finola Ola McCurtain does a great job representing them in Cork. Now they would have the access to the tickets. Anybody else you book with? There's a lot of them say uh, without tickets, and there's a lot of them saying, "Well, we, we we'll try and source tickets." But the sourcing of those tickets is messy. If you aren't with the official agent, and even if you are with the official agent, and there's a name change, uh, the bar scanning systems aren't as good at stadiums as they are uh, for airlines, for instance. The aviation industry has to be on top of this game. And we have seen very highly publicised incidents, notably at the UEFA final, Champions League final, but also the Bordeaux match. Um, we saw it with uh, one of the English matches in Marseille with, with legitimate tickets not showing up on the scanner yeah. and people being refused entry. It's a big, big deal because your only reason for going on this trip is to be at that match. Yeah, I, I was listening to someone on a radio show last week who had got these tickets for their 40th birthday and the whole lot was included arrived up at the stadium tickets in hand it's already been scanned in and that was the end of it they weren't going into the match it, but i mean that's that's distressing when that happens your, your your real problem is you're not dealing with a senior official you're dealing with someone with an incomplete high school or secondary school education usually they're not going to be listening to anything i guess if words get exchanged it becomes a security issue and you get all that heavy-handed stuff yeah. but you would be surprised pj the number of tickets the matches i've been at where tickets didn't scan, you know, sometimes I'm with a group, a large group, and the scan doesn't work. Or the other thing is <clears throat> there's a lot of IDs, you know, you have to show ID that the name of the ticket is the same as the, the no, one on the, on the ticket. Uh, and, you know, I've been, I've been, I travel, obviously, a fair bit, and I try and take in matches abroad a lot. And it, it does astonish me that the number of times, it wouldn't be every time, it wouldn't be even half the time, but the number of times that at least one of the party has that very stressful situation of the ticket, a legitimate ticket not scanning, and then that argument, it's really, really difficult. Um, I would wish that there would be some sort of all-encompassing technology yeah. uh, introduced for these things because it's happening more often than is comfortable. Well, let us assume that we'll get safely past Scotland on Saturday night, one would hope at least, and then that the the bigger call is next weekend when one assumes again it's the All Blacks. Let us imagine, let us dream of getting to a semi-final. Where would you advise people to go to make sure that that package does have a ticket, a ticket that will scan in? Uh, Kilester Travel, uh, the Abbey Travel and Kilester Travel. Um, Offic- the official official salespeople. Like official them. salespeople. And they, the problem is that an awful lot of the packages, they, they, the, 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 the official agent actually pays sometimes more for the tickets than uh, the, the, game, the game price. It's sort okay. of a, a way that the uh, sports organisations have seen them making money, money. So what they tend to do is bundle it in with hotels and flights. Okay. But if you look at those websites at the moment, it says there's little red sold out signs in most yeah. of the semi-final finals. If we don't beat Scotland, we shouldn't even be there. I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to the quarters. The real problem is we have never been beyond the quarters. And exactly. I've been, uh, Everybody Wants I've been, to get to that, I've been that disappointed person in the crowd. I'm still traumatized by some of the All Ireland qu- the World Cup quarter finals. Stop! Stop! stop. I, I don't even want. I don't even want. I, I won't sleep before. I didn't know that for for, for a fact. Now, no, we're going to we're going to do it this time. We have to. Yeah. Couple of other things. It's never uh, been as good. It's never been as good. No. Couple of couple of other things. I mentioned the fact that it's a horrible morning out there, and a lot of people will be browsing over the keyboard to see can I get away to a bit of sunshine with the kids for the midterm break at the end of the month. And you know yourself, there are very few places served better out of Cork than Malaga. And you're fairly sure of the sunshine. Now, I priced it this morning, Owen, for three people to go out of Malaga for the jazz weekend with Aer Lingus, to go out of Cork to Malaga. And they were coming in at not far south of €1,600 Euro for the weekend. The same dates and roughly the same flight times out of Gatwick with EasyJet, 530 euro. Like, we're getting crucified here, particularly at peak times. 
very simple supply and demand. If the demand is high, the prices fly up. Britain is underperforming uh, for loads of reasons, Brexit being one of the main ones, and the economy being another. Um, they're both related. The uh, Cork has uh, probably underestimated capacity this year. Mm. The airlines didn't put on the number of flights. Uh, Ryan, we're very de- dependent on Ryanair in Ireland. They are now. They used to be about uh, just uh, just around forty six percent of overall uh, seats out of Ireland. They're now close to seventy percent because since the pandemic they were first back. But one of the things with Ryanair this year, and it's not entirely their fault for a change, uh, was that they had to curtail flights that they had but, uh, to key locations, like Barcelona being an example, because of their aircraft were late. They're supposed to have 47 to right. the Christmas. They only have 17. So some of their flights are, are, are have been chopped off. The overall out of Ireland is about 96% of what it was pre-pandemic. I think what the airlines did was they put a supply that was a bit lower than that, whereas you're just mentioning England. It's the opposite problem. They have extra seats they can't sell and they're cancelling flights because they can't sell them. Really? But... I would expect 2024 to be better, but don't expect to be going back to pre-pandemic prices because uh, there's loads of other things like... Not even pre-pandemic that. prices, on, but when you look at it for a family, trying to get away... No, look, going away. I've always said anyone who tries to bring their family away during midterm, you know what you're in for. We never did it because of that exact reason. The prices, literally on the Thursday before midterm, the prices double and treble. But three times as much out of Cork as out of Gatwick, to get to the same place. Supply and demand gone mad there. Uh, supply and demand is, it does go mad. Uh, you, the last three flight, uh, seats on the flight are going to be expensive. The, uh, interesting way they, uh, they program the computers, the midterm never goes down that low. So even if you were to book it last this time last year, uh, you would actually find uh, you know a, a, a wonderful price two weeks before or two weeks after. And they have a tradition of trebling not doubling, but trebling yeah. uh, to, from the weeks around them. Midterm, uh, October to March is also when most of the airlines cut back the number of aircraft that keep in the air. So they can't actually artificially just throw them on for the peaks in that period. The most notable peak is during Christmas. So we're looking at pretty high prices for Christmas. I'd love to see more routes out of Cork, by the way, that would take the pressure off Malaga. If you had somewhere like Murcia, uh, yeah. Much, much cheaper to get to there, much, much cheaper. The resorts around there are much, much cheaper. It'd be a lovely route to get yeah, to Cork. Can Cork I tell you that for a second? You said, so the planes, okay, less planes fly in, in the winter. We get that. But you're saying to me that a bit like if you take the bus, Cork Dublin bus or Cork Dublin train, they put on more trains at peak time. They put on more buses at peak time. You can't find two or three more planes, can you? And say, right, for well, Christmas, we're going to have more more pressure on? Most airlines can't because they have to recertify uh, the, the aircraft and it's not worth it. It doesn't actually pay I back. See. But uh, we won't have that problem with Ryanair this winter because they're under so much pressure. They're, they're, uh, they're not going to have uh, extra aircraft to throw around in winter like, uh, uh, and they won't be parking up by the look of things. I have you. I have you. Busy, busy times for, for Ryanair. Just another thing too, I notice, um, I, just reading about it, campsites in France and Spain and Italy and the Netherlands, very popular this year on and very popular booking into 2024. The most wonderful holiday ever, PJ. Really? Never uh, done it, I, I have to say. Uh, all my, my, my girls have gone beyond teenage uh, years now. The reality is all, all our uh, family holidays were camping. All of them were by boat, by ferry, uh, through Cork or through uh, Rosslare. And the, the sweet spot for us was the Vaughan Day. It's about five hours' drive down from the two Roscoff and Cherbourg at two entry points. And uh, camping doesn't mean uh, the tent on the side of the mountain with the leak in it like it used to in my childhood. <laughs> it's very... It's very uh, it's air conditioned uh, mobile homes and yeah. uh, campsites with water slides and zip lines and you know so some of them you stay in a tree house you know it's just fabulous stuff mm. it's real and that was our teenage years and it was very happy and they come back with smatterings of different languages from the children they meet on the side I couldn't recommend it more highly it's a fantastic way to spend a holiday and it's probably under the radar compared with the bucket and spade. 
uh, Malaga because uh, it's uh, easier to uh, more guaranteed sunshine in the south of Spain. Um, a lot of people aren't uh, will do the, the fly drive now, rather. Than, but I do recommend the, the traveling by by ferry because of the uh, particularly when you've got the, the the younger the child, the more luggage you have to bring. Yeah. Uh, particularly, you have the luggage <laughs> issue, and then you come to uh, the ferry on your way home, and you look at the wine shop. And you look at your two daughters and you say, do we really have to bring them home? Because if we left them here, we could spit, uh, fit another case of wine into the car. <laughs> You've been there, haven't you? I know, I know. <laughs> if social services are listening, I never said that. Oh, no, always a pleasure. Thank you. Owen Curry, uh, editor of Air and Travel magazine.